Hello and welcome to another of the session of uh, Indira Foundation's Conflict Studies course 2022-23. Today we have with us Dr. John Jalaturai for a session on conflict transformation. Dr. John is a professor and head of the Department of Gandhian Studies at MGM University, Aurangabad in Maharashtra, India. He has earlier served as Dean of Academic uh, at Gandhi Research Foundation. He holds a PhD from the Peace Research Center, Gujarat Vidya Beat, Ahmedabad. His areas of interest include transforming conflict into creative experience, Gandhian Satyagraha for Dalit liberation, and collective living. Eight module methodology for inclusive dialogue and equitable economic justice. Today he will be with us for an hour uh, because uh, that's the time that he will be able to give for this session. So the students also keep that in mind. If you have any questions, please ask it uh, on the go so that you can receive answers too. And uh, over to you, sir. Thank you. You are Alia Khan. Yeah, I am the coordinator here. I okay, yeah. okay. Uh, greetings to all of you. Uh, it's a pleasure talking to you. Uh, uh, and I met uh, for a uh, while uh, our friend Beza in NATO. He came for a program in which I was also a part. And uh, I found uh, the uh, engagement of India Lab quite exciting. It has been doing a very uh, see, a dedicated, uh, seriously uh, committed work with a very clear objective and the intention. And uh, that endeared me towards India Law. I just got to know uh, about uh, them less than a month ago. I thought I would contribute uh, to its uh, uh, pursuit. And uh, he said uh, that the ongoing program has one uh, theme, sub theme on conflict and in dialogue. And uh, I have been working on this area for uh, some time. Uh, and uh, I thought I would share that with you. Thank you so much. Uh, when we talk about conflict, uh, it is important that uh, we understand what is conflict, what causes conflict, and how are we going to deal with it. Uh, when we say conflict, uh, many often uh, have a kind of bitter experience comes to our mind. It is about uh, people killing one another or uh, hurting uh, people or depriving people. That is what comes to our mind. Conflict is a negative experience. Conflict is an experience we tend to avoid. That is the first notion we get. Unfortunately, that is how uh, the society oriented us uh, to this uh, inevitable process of life. Uh, conflict is an integral part of life and it is neither bad nor good. There is nothing bitter about conflict. There is nothing bitter about conflict. It is neither bad nor uh, good. It is an occurrence. That is how uh, conflictologists understand conflict. Uh, why we say it is uh, human life is all about uh, social relationship. Human life is all about social relationship. Social relationship is uh, bringing us into an inevitability of uh, uh, incompatibility. Incompatibility means uh, not being compatible. You understand the term, I think. It is uh, a, a situation of not agreeable, not unagreeable situation. Uh, why it is so? Individuals who constitute the society are unique. Every individual is unique. 
no two individuals are identical uh, every one is different from the other this is a basic point and uh, we as social being are expected to connect with people form communities and explore life through the communities right we cannot live individually we cannot live without society that is why we are called social being right so uh, these two position one every individual is different uh, that is point one point two we have to live together they are mutually exclusive same minded people common uh, uh, people with commonality can come together that that is uh, understandable people with differences cannot come together uh, there are many reasons we will not go into those reasons different people cannot come together if they come there is likely to be friction uh, if uh, people from two different language come together uh, the relationship will not get formed or people who come from two different food culture uh, when come together they may not be able to complement each other they may not i am giving you very stark differences in order to make my point clear if differences cannot coexist then that is true with any two individual because every individual is different that is an established point uh, there is no two ident- individuals are identical not even monozygotic individuals that we need to understand uh, psychologically we create our own personality our own perspective uh, which is uh, different from other so when different people come together to cooperate to pursue life there tend to be occasions of differences and prolonged differences likely to get uh, into frustration uh, irritation and that is what we say conflict okay so uh, conflict is inevitable uh, but that is not to discourage uh, that that is a reminder of us of a very positive point that is what i wanted to bring uh, conflict occurs between people who are connected so just to interrupt Please. for a moment we only see the title slide i i'll, I'll get into the other slide yeah yes. okay uh, i am just giving you the background and then i will get into this uh, conflict occurs only between people who are connected between two unconnected people there is no way conflict occurs can there be a conflict between uh, a indian villager and an african villager they are very very different uh, uh, but there is no conflict because there is no relation there is no connectivity there is no uh, social engagement only between those who are socially engaged socially connected conflict is possible if that is true then conflict should remind us of the relationship that is under strain it should not remind us of uh, the pain involved unfortunately we focus on the pain that uh, conflict creates rather than the relationship that is beneath the conflict this is very important for us to remember uh, why it is important uh, because uh, life is all about relationship relationship gives us uh, the necessities of life and that relationship between different people are bound to have occasions of friction and that occasion of friction if we look into positively becomes an opportunity to strengthen relationship 
friction gives us an opportunity to strengthen relationship if we want to take it that way so uh, let us not focus on the uh, pain point part but on the uh, opportunity part this is something we keep in mind as we progress uh, we will try to strengthen this point further and see how this can be developed into a conflict uh, a kind of dialogic uh, approach we will do that <clears throat> first i will introduce oh, sorry the date sorry first i will introduce to you some definitions uh, <clears throat> uh, you might have heard of many definitions conflict is defined as a difference between the expected and the actual <clears throat> these four points i will not elaborate uh, when differences meet differences coexist differences encounter uh, there is a conflict this can be uh, understood in the context of husband and wife uh, business partners colleagues friends neighbors uh, neighboring communities or neighboring economy or neighboring countries when differences meet differences coexist or differences encounter the experience is one of conflict uh, that i leave it to you to uh, uh, ponder over but the definitions i would like to share are uh, conflict is a difference between expected and actual okay uh, what does it mean you are here you expect uh, that uh, john should speak for 2 hours uh, whereas john comes and tells no 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 i will talk only one hour i am not uh, rising up to my ex your expectation you get that point the actuality is that i am going to speak one hour the expectation was two hours it is a small disappointment it is a small uh, i mean uh, you can name it anyway uh, or uh, uh, i i backed out from my promise uh, uh, john is not reliable you can say anything uh, but it creates a small uh, annoyance a, a small friction uh, a small frustration that is what is called conflict uh, and you go for breakfast uh, you have set an expectation of breakfast if you are paying for breakfast Uh, you have set an expectation uh, they they serve the food uh, if the food is not tasty uh, or up to the expectation then you are disappointed the actual food is not up to your expectation that is conflict uh, children uh, coming from uh, school if are not reaching as expected in the scheduled time parents get into agitation Uh, anxiety trigger it is a conflict conflict between expected and actual uh, if you are a, a youngster uh, in school college you work very hard you write your exam and uh, when the result comes result if not is not uh, to your expectation the disappointment is a conflict why why me all these questions are there. we can say about it everywhere uh, economy is expected to take care of every citizen actually it doesn't take care of every citizen that is what we call unemployment unemployment is a conflict difference between expected and actual uh, between the neighboring countries we have set an expectation from the other uh, political decency or uh, diplomatic decency or uh, defense uh, Uh, dignified conduct uh, actually it doesn't happen when it doesn't happen as expected that is what we call uh, international conflict at the highest level it becomes war so expected and actual 
gives us a handy definition of the conflict. Okay. The second, potential and actual. What is potential? The term is uh, self evident. Uh, when we uh, study, equip ourselves, we are potential, potentially good, yeah, potentially uh, bright youngster when doesn't get uh, opportunity to express oneself. Uh, the actuality, many a time we see we are underemployed, we are underutilized, we are underplaced, we are underrecognized. Why do we say we are underrecognized? We know what is our potential. And the actuality is not matching that potential. And that is what is called conflict. Gender conflict is a conflict of potential and actual. It is also an expected and actual. Uh, potentially, we are all equal. Are we equal actually? Greater the gap, the severe the conflict we feel within. You, I think you understand my point. Hmm? Is it understandable? Okay. The third is <clears throat> actual and ideal. Uh, it should be ideal and actual. We all have our ideals. Do we? We all have our ideals. Uh, if we are religious people, uh, God is our ideal. Or the scriptural uh, way of life is our ideal. We know how far we are up to that. Greater the gap, severe is the compunction. We are uh, haunted by the guilt of not being honest to our religion. It is a conflict. Ideal is not about uh, the absolute alone. Uh, in day-to-day -day life, we have our set standards. We have our set standards uh, for everything. If you uh, buy uh, a piece of bread or a, a cake and you taste it and you say it is not tasty. It is not good. Yeah. And ice cream is not tasty. What is the reference? Why do you say it is not tasty? You have your own set standard. Over a long period of time, you have uh, tasted uh, cake or bread or ice cream and you have set a taste for it the reference taste. That is your ideal. You have an ideal cake in your mind, ideal ice cream in your mind. And that tells you this particular ice cream or cake is not up to that. When your actuality is not matching your own set standard, you are in a disappointment, a frustration. That is what is called conflict. Uh, value conflict, ethical conflict, even constitutional conflict. Constitution of a country is an ideal document. It is, uh, it is not just a document. It is the uh, uh, spirit of the community. The community has decided to live in a particular way for a particular objective uh, in a particular place with a particular group of people. And we all want to live uh, in a manner that everybody is a success, everybody celebrates life. That is uh, put into word and that is what we call as constitution. Constitution, uh, the word may be uh, deficient, but the spirit of the constitution is an ideal spirit. But uh, nations, are unable to live up to their own constitution. If a democratic countries like India have a constitution which guarantees justice, equality, and liberty with the spirit of fraternity, 
in the socio economic political uh, realm of life then this country should not have poverty this country should not have discrimination the gender discrimination or uh, religious or caste discrimination it shouldn't have but we do have because we are not up to that ideal either we are unable to understand or we don't want to understand we don't know but the gap is evident and the gap is haunting us that is what we see uh, in the form of socio economic political inequality injustice exploitation subjugation and that is nothing but conflict <clears throat> then uh, there are many other definitions i have i i am not uh, going to deal with uh, because we don't have time but uh, they are all uh, 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 nuanced definitions uh, if you understand these uh, three expected and actual potential and actual uh, ideal and actual uh, that is good enough all your conflicts uh, can be understood using these three definitions and uh, that will uh, help you uh, go further in the analysis of conflict i'll give a small break uh, for you to uh, make any comment or uh, query before i proceed to uh, the next part do you have a query or do you have a, a observation to make anybody who has any question or observation may raise their hand i think we are at start right now so the question doesn't arise now okay uh, do you understand the definition yeah sure okay okay <clears throat> uh, uh, we will not get into the other there are uh, a number of uh, conflict structures that will help us understand uh, how conflict occurs in our life like uh, there is a structure called the plo i just throw these words for you to uh, ruminate or you, you can scout for the definitions yeah, they are all available the potential latent overt it is a, a linear structure of conflict conflict always start as a potential conflict then emerge into uh, germinate into latent and then become Uh, manifest then there is a, a abc attitude behavior and context a triangular structure uh, all these are uh, essential understanding you should have if you want to analyze or uh, try to resolve conflict uh, in an inclusive way uh, i just leave it at it <clears throat> because we are talking uh, about conflict Uh, in a group that believes in uh, dialogue i would like to introduce some factors which are both co- uh, common to both conflict and communication before i go into the next slide uh, i would like to ask uh, you friends you are you have been talking about dialogue which is uh, a, a very strong aspect of communication uh, what are the factors do you think play a role in dialogue uh, what are the factors can any or some of you uh, try to articulate some factors okay? very simple factors you can uh, name that will help us proceed factors of conflict yeah um i hope my voice is audible i i, I, uh, I, I asked uh, factors of uh, dialogue or factors of communication uh, before that i said the factors are more or less common both in conflict and communication 
So uh, uh, it is as good as factors of conflict. Um, so you so you asked for factors of dialogue. That is dialogue or communication. Factors of dialogue or communication. Meaningful discussion. Meaningful discussion. Very good. Okay, that would be one. Um, willingness. Willingness to communicate. There willingness to communicate. Okay. Mm. Um, and then open mindedness and to accept, you know, the idea of acceptance and really taking in what the other person is saying, listening well. Listening. Very First, good. I think there would be language. Language, language where yes. we could communicate, whether that is understandable or not. Language. A common language, I think, yes. Uh, good, good, very good, very good. Proceed, proceed. I'll be happy to get more of the factors you are coming on uh, wonderfully well um common understanding of the issues common definitions common definition common understanding uh, yes okay good willingness to listen uh, that is a good starting point i am happy that you stated it I am sorry, I am unable to hear you. Willingness to listen or communicate. I have brought before you. Okay, listen, listening. Uh, listening is already stated. Thank you for reiterating. Uh, am I audible? Okay. Yes, so you are. Uh, I have placed before you some 13 factors. Uh, you you keep uh, looking at them both from the point of view of conflict and communication. You will see the commonality. Uh, for for a communication to take place, we need a listener or a speaker. Sorry, listener and a speaker, right? Then only there can be a communication. There can be a dialogue only when two parties come to listen and speak. Uh, so in conflict, we call uh, the parties are the actor and the altar. Actor and altar are the two uh, factors we have in conflict. Without these two factors, we don't have conflict. Even in a conflict which is intrapersonal, where there is only one human being, there are two uh, personalities. Uh, one, one mind says yes, another mind says no. So there is a duality within the mind, and that becomes uh, within us, there are two parties yes party and no party. So Two parties constitute a communication and a conflict. Then comes, uh, that is the first one. Second, uh, there should be a uh, issue. There, there should be a contention, bone of contention. We say there should be a, a problem. There should be a frustrating aspect between. In the communication, we say we need to have a message. In conflict, we say we should have a irritant. That is the issue. Hello, am I audible? Yes, I am audible. Clearly. Am I audible? Mm -hmm. Yes, we can hear you. Okay. So, uh, 
there should be a uh, issue that is the uh, third factor or a message in the communication. Then uh, you said language. Uh, actually, we need to have a means of communication. Uh, conflict requires a means of fighting. It can be physical, it can be verbal, it can be emotional, means of communication, means of fighting. Okay, so that is the third factor. Fourth factor is the methodology. Uh, language is a means. Uh, what is a difference between means and methodology? Means is a tool. Methodology is a technology. How are you going to use the tool? That is methodology. Uh, language can be used uh, in a friendly way, in a hostile way, in a intimidating way, or in a persuasive way. There are many ways you can use the language, right? So the uh, language alone is not sufficient. You need to have a very good command over the method of using the language. If you want to succeed in communication or in solving the problem, okay? In conflict, we use a very, very uh, violent methodology, like uh, uh, we use physical means of communication uh, uh, in conflict. That is what we call is physical attack. We attack each other. We communicate that uh, I am no match to you. You are no match to me. Uh, I can finish finish you off. That is what we say uh, by being physically violent. Uh, or we use such language which are highly threatening, uh, uh, exclusive, dominating, and that is what uh, uh, we occurs when we have conflict. So the methodology is violent in conflict, and that makes it bitter. I'll come about the other uh, other side of it later on, but uh, let me introduce the uh, factors. Uh, means and methodology, then uh, values. Uh, conflict has a value, communication has a value. Uh, all kind of social values, interpersonal values, uh, our, our uh, fundamental principles, our uh, objective of life, all these put together is value. These values determine both the communication and uh, conflict. Okay, that is the next factor, value. Uh, the, the other factor is there are some catalysts that promote conflict or uh, uh, they promote a, a resolution. Uh, in the communication also, uh, uh, there are many catalysts that work uh, effectively in turning communication positive or negative. Uh, in conflict, we talk about negative catalysts like uh, uh, prejudice, uh, kind of uh, tit for tat attitude, uh, stereotypic uh, mindset, uh, or all kind of complexities, superior complexities or inferior complexities, uh, or our distrust. All these play a kind of catalytic role in making conflict worse, in making communication bad. Even if we have very great, great command over language and methodology, if we have negative catalysts in our character, uh, the communication is going to be negative in its end result. Uh, in conflict, it works very, very badly. I mean, there is a key role for conflict, I mean, for catalyst in conflict. <clears throat> uh, as I said, prejudice, stereotype, uh, it for that attitude, mirror image, uh, uh, all these can be elaborated, but we don't have time, so I'm not doing. You can look into it, uh, uh, help yourself through uh, uh, internet uh, uh, literatures. <coughs> Catalyst. And then context and situation are two other factors. What are uh, context and the situation? Con you know, when there is a Crime takes place, police come and they take spot study, you know, forensic study. 
the context uh, tells the story uh, in an accident the position of the vehicles that collided tells who was at fault it is on the right side or left side at the center uh, who has turned so much uh, uh, to what extent all these tells the story about conflict so the context is very important uh, if i mean in a communication if you want to tell something to your parents you you wait for the opportune time the right time to communicate so that context is important when uh, they are busy uh, if you go and tell probably they will not listen to you or they will not give the importance uh, the matter deserves uh, the context is important in conflict context is important uh, uh, if we try to read uh, Uh, out of context whether it is interpersonal behavior interpersonal communication or history if you read out of context uh, we are going to end up a negative uh, emotion or conflict <coughs> context is important uh, the situation i mean context and situation are one and the same to a great extent uh, but uh, 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 there are some differences so we uh, try to use these two terms situation is uh, the larger context the lo- the background of the party uh, in in criminology it is said uh, a criminal is a victim of his own situation even a criminal even a victimizer is a victim of his or her own situation yet a criminal is not a born criminal a victimizer is not a born victimizer the person is a, a casualty a person is a, that person is a victim uh, of his own her situation in the sense of uh, perpetual poverty perpetual situation of social deprivation uh, or suppression slowly turned into hostile attitude and the person start behaving uh, criminal or a social uncivil way so the background of the person the larger context need to be understood if we want to succeed uh, in in dialogue also it is uh, the same we cannot go and dialogue with poor people uh, uh, for uh, communal harmony or uh, uh, human rights when they are uh, under great stress of economic deprivation when they are poor starving they don't have enough to meet their end uh, we cannot talk about uh, 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 social harmony human rights higher uh, aspirations of life so if you want to have a dialogue uh, in a, a community where poor people are lying we need to start from poverty alleviation that is the best way to start the dialogue process Uh, when the stomach is full our ears open otherwise ears don't don't open it is a common sense even for us uh, because we are all well fed or sufficiently taken care we go for higher uh, search set of knowledge so the uh, situation the larger context need to be understood that will make conflict uh, resolution possible our communication more effective then uh, <coughs> the three other factors are uh, goal every conflict has a goal every communication has an objective if we don't know the objective if we don't know the goal of conflict then we will not be able to solve the problem the goal is important in a conflict what is the goal we we have our own set goals uh, if somebody has uh, pickpocketed my wallet and uh, uh, running away i may chase the person i may catch hold of the person there may be a lot of uh, wriggling and uh, 
i am trying to overpower that person trying to escape the onlookers may say they are fighting that is a conflict my being uh, aggressive upon the person has a very clear goal i have to retrieve my wallet if somebody has uh, insulted us we fight uh, we have a clear objective i have to regain my self esteem i have to regain my respect uh, or the person should apologize for insulting me clear objective every conflict has a objective we need to understand what is the objective then only we can move uh, towards it uh, in the process of solution that is about goal uh, there is a intention behind the goal what is the intention a uh, goal objective intention may appear to be uh, sounding same but they have a difference goal is the physical objective what do we want to achieve that is uh, goal what do we want to achieve is objective uh, the, they are two different things say what do you want to achieve in a, in a degree a course uh, or a diploma program uh, we may our goal is to finish successfully uh, we want to get a degree we want to get a, a, a masters uh, degree a title that will help us get a job that is what we have in a, a as, as we have a, as goal in our academics that is what but uh, more than what why is important why do we want to study we want to get knowledge it is not the degree certificate or the paper that is important it is not the title but the underlying knowledge the title represents certain care capability that certain caliber that is what is called why and the why is important the why connotes intention in a conflict because many a time people talk about uh, restoring normalcy uh, by any means uh, Uh, police have their own techniques they we were beating to both the parties and make them remain quiet they achieve the goal but uh, the objective is far from achieved although there is no uh, fight between these two parties uh, they are not happy they are not fighting because they are afraid of the police afraid of the uh, punishment where between them they are as hostile as earlier is not solved so uh, what do we want to achieve a yeah, peace what do we want to achieve in order to restore relationship so that the harmonious coexistence is possible so in a in a, a conflict situation or in a communication situation Uh, what do we want to communicate why do we want to communicate both need to be understood answered then only communication will be healthy conflict resolution will be possible and the last factor is energy uh, uh, energy application need to be very careful in a conflict uh, uh, in a institutionalized conflict situation uh, 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 whether in a, in a community conflict situation or in a industrial conflict situation uh, usually the parties don't sit because the parties are too many uh, in communities there may be uh, 100000 people decide and a uh, few 100000 on the other side they cannot sit together so they they bring the representative representatives for conflict uh, resolution or negotiation and what does that mean we need to optimize the energy input people represent energy because when the when the people come they come with perspectives ideas uh, their own 
uh, assertion all these are energy the energy need to be optimized and balanced then only communication will happen then only conflict resolution can be made easy now uh, i'll quickly wind up by saying uh, all these 12 13 factors please remember all these 12 13 factors give us two options a positive side option and a negative option for example uh, in the in the first fact the two factors actor and alter uh, in a conflict situation if you you can see yourself as a victim or as a stakeholder in a situation there are two possibilities if you see yourself as a victim you tend to use a language which is defensive or offensive if you look at yourself as a stakeholder a partner in a social engagement partner in a relationship which is under strain then you may use a language which is neutral or mutually encouraging mutually educative so uh, the way you look at yourself will change the course of conflict uh, uh, occurrence so you can see yourself as a victim or stakeholder you can see the other party as a victimizer or as i said earlier a victim of his or her own situation or you can see neutrally the other person is my partner when uh, when husband and wife fight they should remember they are life partners if they forget for a while even for a while then the conflict will turn into violence if they start looking at each other as a nemesis as a kind of uh, threat to life or a burden as a frustration then the conflict becomes bitter if we remember that i am fighting with my wife i am fighting with my spouse then that consciousness will make uh, the uh, gravity of problem less the magnitude will be brought down considerably so conflict gives two options you can see the other party as a victimizer as an oppressor as a, a, a nuisance or as a stakeholder as a ignorant or innocent person uh, who needs our help to uh, get informed these two op- options are available issue is a frustration issue is an opportunity every conflict is an opportunity we need to understand i don't have time so i am not elaborating but every conflict is an opportunity because at least that conflict creates an opportunity for you to discuss uh, uh, what is not understood what is misunderstood it creates an opportunity instead we take it egoistically and start fighting it with each other i am sorry these all need to be elaborated much but uh, uh, unable conflict issue can be an opportunity issue can be a frustration these are two options if you take it as an op- opportunity your language will become more inclusive if you take it as a frustration then it becomes bitter a goal can be inclusive or exclusive means can be persuasive or coercive these are all options uh, which option you are going to take uh, that will determine the course of conflict if everything goal goal can be uh, uh, inclusive goal or exclusive goal i want to win is an uh, exclusive goal i want to resolve is an inclusive goal i want to improve the situation it is an inclusive goal uh, that we need to understand so uh, uh, many a time i i with that point i'll close energy uh, in our in our anxiety to succeed we try to employ more energy when we talk loud when we talk with uh, more ener- more emotion uh, hyper emotion we are actually employing more energy that will uh, compel the opponent to match us with a higher energy application that person will also raise their voice the person will also become hyper emotional uh, if i bring uh, two more people to 
help me fight it out uh, the other person will be scared but uh, will not yield he will bring four or five people so energy energy need to be optimized uh, we cannot uh, over employ energy uh, it gives an opportunity in all the conflict i can bring my uh, uh, friends and uh, family uh, people uh, to my support that is always there but if i know the opponent is alone i should face alone i should in bring two more people to make my point strong because that is an exclusive goal i can keep on telling uh, i stop here if you have few any uh, point to raise or question to ask you may ask please raise your hand if you have any questions and we will take them one by one can i go ahead yeah sure oh yes hi uh good afternoon sir thank you for your enlightening speech on the conflict and its various dimensions right from understanding its definition to various factors and perceptions how it take place uh my question is simple if we take uh, into account media and conflict transformation uh does media help in transforming the conflict or it is with the course of the conflict media itself gets transform transformed media is an instrument mm. uh, instrument by itself will not solve the problem it is the person who wield the instrument and the person's uh, intention attitude objective that will determine uh, media by itself is a, a, a material object or a kind of concept uh, abstract object uh, it doesn't work on its own it is like uh, uh, i have uh, the pen of uh, albert einstein i it will that pen will not make me a, a nobel laureate in the same way media uh, the people behind media matter and when they are not properly oriented to the fundamentals of life then the media is going to play a dirty role that is what is happening anybody else who has any questions hello sir <clears throat> yes uh, in the pr present context in the indian context does media play, play a role in uh, in solving the conflict or or it plays like the ravish kumar would say that stop watching tv and you will be very peaceful with yourself <laughs> i mean see today uh, today media is in the hands of uh, immature people are not in the hands of those who understand the noble noble purpose of a nation life uh, i'll give you a small parallel uh, there are number of sports uh, uh, available you can play soccer you can play cricket uh, or you can play uh, uh badminton uh these games can be played at your backyard at the regional level at the national level or at the uh, global level you can go go for uh, world cup and uh, uh, olympic all these are possible but all, for all these you need to have different levels of sophistication if you are very very rudimentary till you can successfully play in your backyard nobody will bother but if you want to play the same game in olympics you need to have highest level of sophistication not only in terms of skill uh, attitude emotion even in your perspective everything has to be at the highest level then only the person can play now we are all 
uh, reason to live at the national level or at the global level we are in global village today we are called the global citizens we are playing global game our life is a global life but unfortunately we are still in our attitude and perspective just individuals we are not global with a, with a, a local attitude we are trying to play a global life game immaturity just because i have risen in my popularity i do not become a leader but that is what has happened uh, there are small minded people risen to play the highest role and that is what is causing all these trouble and the media is no exception it is in the hands of people who are not sufficiently mature sufficiently oriented we all need to take a responsibility to uh, educate ourselves we keep ourselves with uh, uh, social niceties political uh, acumen uh, then only it will work and we are moving towards it in the in the meantime there are a lot of suffering but uh, we need to sustain the hope Irfan, yes. please go ahead. Irfan has raised. Yes, sir. Raised uh, can you uh, just give us some examples of uh, hidden conflict or latent conflict? Uh, what it actually means and how it happens? I am really tempted to say many things on that, but uh, uh, okay, friends. Uh, uh, I'll I'll show you another slide. I just a minute. i'm sorry i am unable to trace it uh, friend uh, you imagine a seed the seed has a potential to grow into a large tree but it is not a tree right uh, that is potential you put it in 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 the soil and start watering it uh, for few days there is no evidence there is no evidence but Uh, the seed after getting water and the nutrients start germinating germinating that is what is called latent uh, uh, growth and after few days it start uh, coming out of the soil and it becomes manifest that is ovot conflict also like that uh, some we have a conflict potential if we two are becoming business partner and we have certain very eccentric characters uh, we ignore because we have lot of uh, common interest that eccentric characters within us remain as a potential threat potential conflict uh, over a period of time we may be successful but the, our eccentric characteristics start irritating each other Uh, it irritates but because there is a good profit there is a good business going we keep tolerating keep tolerating we keep tolerating suggests that there is an irritation evident that is latent that is called latent on the day one we had differences but it was not irritating because we were in great mood to go ahead that is potential when it start irritating but we tolerate that is latent at one point of time we start uh, discussing about it or fighting over it that becomes manifest you understand uh, that happens everywhere the point why do we say this is an intelligent person understand conflict at its potential level or to the minimum at a latent level because a stitch in time saves nine when the conflict burst out it is very difficult to contain because it becomes complex emotional expression friend i am extremely sorry thank you I, so I, much <laughs> yeah no we will let this be the last question and thank you so much for joining us today dr john and uh, we hope to have you for our future set sessions as well i hope all of you enjoyed it as much as i did i i i, I, I promise i i promise i promise 
uh, i owe you one more hour but uh, that is left to you yeah thank you so much thank you so much for that i enjoy talking to you looking forward to meet you sometimes uh, inshallah yeah yeah we will we will thank you and everybody else you are uh, the participants the reflection forms will be emailed to you and you can fill them up uh, accordingly okay thank you so much okay.